Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Heike and you're watching Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. The furry assistant Lola, the ragdoll cat, is taking a nap. I am suspecting she is taking that nap in the bathroom sink because the boyfriend just left for work like half an hour ago and she was she was not into it. She was using him. He had a job. <laughs> So welcome back to my channel. Welcome if it's your first time. Um, this is a channel that focuses on diamond painting, stitching and sometimes knitting at the moment. And um, in a recent, I think it was a recent women chat? I can't even remember when I brought this point up. I uh, talked about that I had accumulated quite a few Owl Forest embroidery kits I hadn't unboxed yet and that I didn't plan to do it because I thought these unboxings were kind of uninteresting. So you basically told me, no, <laughs> we want to see it. So that's what we are going to do today. We are going to do a giant unboxing for uh, tooth four, six, seven kits that I have ordered, I think between last year, September-ish and now. So the very last one arrived a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's a bit of a lie. I got a delivery yesterday, but that was just floss and needle minders. I'm going to show you those as well, but I have already unboxed it. It's for the Alice in Wonderland cell stitch along they are doing right now. They started it a couple of uh, uh, yeah a couple of weeks ago. Second drop is day after tomorrow, so I got the floss and it finally arrived. And of course, because a person needs three million needle minders, I got all the needle minders they had for this uh, stitch along, which were five. <laughs> so I'm going to show you those as well. All right, let's let's basically start with um, the project I'm currently working on. So the project I'm currently working on is um, Water Spirit. It is one of right now six kits that have basically the same size um, this smallish um, square shape. It is a 111 square here um piece and in centimeters if stitched on the um fabric they give you which is a 20, uh, 32 count linen it will be 17.5 by 17.5 centimeter that's like 7 by 7 inch if i'm not mistaken yeah 7 by 7 inch um these kits always give you the ingredients on the back so you usually get of course the the pattern the floss hand dyed floss they use dmc as their base um, thread which they hand dye themselves they give you the linen and um, a needle as well as a needle minder with each of these kits which is super handy because you get everything basically that you need except for scissors, but you should have those on hand anyway. <laughs> so that's why I love these kits for one of the reasons I love them. So Water Spirit, or like I lovingly call him Fish Dude, is this guy riding on a massive, I think it's a catfish, I'm not entirely sure, not a fish person. But um, I just love these pieces. They come from Russian folklore, I believe. Um, the first one I did, and which you have seen on my channel, if you have been with me for a while, is the Baba Yaga. Um, and two more kits I have previously unboxed and shown you were the Swamp Witch, the Kikimora, and the Forest Spirit, I think it was called. But don't ask me for the Russian name. I don't speak Russian, so I probably butcher anything I say anyway, except for the, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, but I think that the English translation name they used on their site was Forest Spirit. So he is officially called Water Spirit. And I have already started him. I've shown him on my last floss tube. And this is how far I've come working on him. 
Um, this is like two evenings worth of stitching, but not like long evenings. I find that these Owl Forest kits stitch up very fast. Um, I just enjoy it so much. And I also, I think this really shows it well. I love their, their hand dyed threads because there's always such beautiful variegation in them. I just, I just love them. First kit I did was a Bayoun cat and I fell in love with it instantly. I have only finished two so far, but um, I am one of these days going to have a huge collection of beautiful Russian cross stitch because they are seriously talented. The girls from, or women I should probably say, from our forest. So um, that's how far I've come with him. And this is, uh, let me take off the needles so you can see it. This is the um, needle minder that came with the kit. So the needle minder is always going to fit the kit. Uh, this is a sturgeon, if I'm not mistaken. Animal Crossing to the rescue. I know English fish names now. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> um, yeah, and this, this is the needle minder which comes with this kit. I love the Owl Forest needle minders. They are very simple, but they are pretty. And Owl Forest uses extremely strong magnets, um, which I adore very much. I have had a few needle minders I made myself. Um, I don't use weak magnets, but for whatever reason, they tend to not work well with all the pins, basically, I use. I don't know why. Some work very well, some don't. I'm not into the needle minder business. So, who let me, let me just... I am using the uh, cut apart pattern for the first time. Basically, what you get is a colored pattern. It is pretty big. The print is pretty big and um, you get two versions. You get this cut apart version and then you get one which has the full pattern on the sheet for these 111 square pieces. It's on one sheet. Um, the bigger kits like Bayon Cat was a bit bigger than that. Um, it was printed on two sheets and I appreciate it so much when a company supplies a colored sheet, no matter if it is digital or um, printed. Because with colored cross-stitch patterns, I can actually stitch from my screen without um, any help. Because my eye is pretty good at finding the spot where I was on a colored pattern. With black and white, I'm lost. Black and white, I have to mark off. I hate it. My eyes hate it. So I appreciate it very much when a company gives me a colored pattern. And I wish that at least all the digital patterns would come with a colored version that would make my life so much easier i'm an ios person i don't own an android device so or i don't own an android device that i can use for pattern keeper i have a super old tablet but that thing would die a certain death if i tried to install one more app on it so <laughs> we're not going there so i can't use pattern keeper right now and it's it's quite a bear so i appreciate that very much. Um, it is always printed on very high quality paper. It is crisp, it is clear, it is big enough um, that you don't have to worry that you have to strain your eyes. And like I said, it comes in two versions. You have this cut apart version, which I am using for this project now because I wanted to try it. So basically I have cut the parts and I am sticking the pattern part I am working on on my um, frame here so that I don't have to swivel my head around all the time because I've noticed that this causes quite a bit of strain in my neck, uh, which sounds a bit dumb, but it's it's reality. So <laughs> I'm going to remember to put my stuff off here to the right so I can put up the pattern we are talking about, the picture here on the left. So let's see how well that works. Like I said, I've, I've already started to to work on this, but I still want to show you the colors I am working with. And let's see if we can, I can put the color names here. Uh, push that a bit to the back without really showing you the pattern. So you, I can tell you what the, the names of these colors are. So this is the yellow you've seen in his sleeves and in his shirt hem. It is called Honey and it has this beautiful variegation from light to to dark yellow, 
really a honey tone in the darkest colors. And then we have this green, which is the forest shadow. This is a beautiful green. It has a beautiful variegation, but it also has a lot of vibrant undertone. It is not in your face green, but it's, it's really, really pretty. And then we have Fox's Tail. Fox's Tail was also in Baba Yaga and I think in Bayon Cat. So this is, is a recurring color. I've seen it multiple times and um, I love how this stitches up. I'm usually not an orange fan, but this orange is key. I think I have to put this lamp away a bit. It's casting too much of a warm light. Yeah, that is more true to color. Looks pretty good. Then we have the color chocolate, which is very apt. We have gray moss, and it is more of a grayish green, not as, as vibrant as the other one. This is a thunder sky, it's a bluish gray. And I think the variegation on this one is going to be fantastic. This is what the big fish is, obviously. <laughs> we have the color white mushroom. And this is a white base with a bit of light gray. I don't know how well this trend... I think you can see it. Um, this is a fun color. I can't wait to see. Um, so far I've only had plain white in our forest kits and this is so much more interesting. Even if white has the slightest, slightest hint of color in it, I find it so much more interesting than just stitching white. And this is nude. We've had the nude color in pretty much every kit. I am not sure if they actually over dye this one because this is a solid color and this could very well be just a regular DMC, I'm not sure. What are they saying what it is? Uh, don't they have the DMC conversion on here? Strange. There's no conversion on here. Maybe they just do that for the digital charts that don't come in a kit. I don't know. So, but this is basically the fish dude or water spirit. I'm just now realizing this is going to take ages to get through seven kits. Um, every single kit also comes with this little instruction sheet which tells you a little bit about um, how to use the floss to achieve a certain um, result with the variegation. So that's also in every single kit. This is the bag that the fabric comes in. Mine is obviously already on the frame. So let's see, get all the, all the stuff in here and not lose anything. Oh, this might have been the floss bag and this is the fabric bag. Details not interesting. So next up, same series of pieces is House Spirit. You can see he has this little straw hat on his head and the little kitty and there are chickens and these other birds that look very fiery to me. <laughs> and of course um, the eggs at the bottom here. And I don't know if they are broken eggs, the little chicklets came out, not entirely sure. I think the, these are ducks or geese. So there's a lot of details in these paintings. I particularly love these paintings. I'm, I'm with the diamond painting right now. With these um, patterns, I particularly love the borders um, for these small kits. I think the borders are pretty much the, the most beautiful thing about the whole piece in the end. So the needle minder for this one is this, I think it's a duck, isn't it? <laughs> it is very cute. Um, I said that it always comes with a needle, right? So there's your needle. On top of the needle minder, we have the fabric, the instruction sheet and the pattern. As always, as mentioned, it's this big colorful print and it comes in these two versions, cut apart and one piece. 
Um, does it say which fabric it is? No, it just says that it is a 32 count linen. This is one of the Zweigart um, standard colors. It's probably um, either dirty linen or khaki, light khaki, summer khaki, something like that. Um, nothing special. You can get this in pretty much any shop that um, sells Zweigart fabric and go for a natural tone fabric and you are golden. Um, that being said, I think these patterns are only available in kit form, so you probably don't have to worry about uh, getting fabric anyway, unless you want to st stitch it more than once. But then make sure to, to um, try and find a good conversion for your threads or autumn thread. That's also a possibility. Um, our forest sells their thread. Why did I put this away? Um, sells their thread as well in uh, single skeins or sometimes in kits. Depending. Just check. Check what you need because you have all the names in here. So let's see, what do we have here? We have once more Thunder Sky. It's the same grayish, bluish gray, grayish blue. I would say bluish gray. Um, we had in the previous kit. I think we have a lot of repeats in here actually. We have Olive, slightly different green. It's a bit lighter than the one in the Water Spirit kit. But again, for a color that is called olive, that is this is much more vibrant and appealing to me than a straight up olive would be. <laughs> so I dig it. Uh, we have chocolate, I think. Yeah, this is this is chocolate again. Same color as in the other kit. This is probably foxtail again. Yeah, so you see what foxtail looks skeined up versus bobbinated. My nose is itchy. This is dark nude, so this is a tone darker than the one in the last kit. Again, I'm not entirely sure if they actually dye this themselves or if this is just straight up pre-dyed um, DMC, it could very well be. This is once again honey, so you see what this looks skeined up. And this is Ecru, or like my English speaking friends say, Ecru. Um, it's basically a very light beige, an off-white with a bit beige in it. And I think this might also be straight up DMC, not really over dyed, because why would they? DMC has an accru, accru shade. So that is um, House Spirit. So that used to be neat, it is no longer neat. So, that is that. And then the S of right now, latest and last kit from this series is that guy. That's what he looks like. What's his official name? Father Mushroom is his official name. Um, again, this comes with a 32 count Zweigart linen. And let's have a look. It is not quite the same tone as the last one. Can I? I'm not sure if the camera will pick up the difference, but it's not the same. This is a little more greenish. But it's once again one of the standard, yeah, I think you can see it, of the standard Zweigart fabrics. This is not something special or over dyed. Um, and easy to find if you want to do this more than once. Oops. Ouch. That was two needle minders snapping together and my finger in between. That's how strong the magnets are. I'm separated. 
speaking of needle minders, this is the one coming with the kit. Little mushrooms with the ladybird on top. This is so stinking cute. I just adore these needle minders. So instruction kit, like I said, it's always in there. And then let's have a look. I think these are once again very familiar colors. Oh my god, this is so cute. I haven't looked at this pattern yet. I had looked at the other two, but this one is my first time as well. And it is so stinking cute. So, these are the colors. Okay. Will you stay? Will you stay? Be a good pattern. Yep, it is staying. Thank you, pattern. <laughs> I can work with patterns like that. So, this is Foxtail once more. <laughs> this is Green Oak, yet another green. Owl Forest seems to have 3001 green tones. And they are all pretty similar, but not the same. This is Hazelnut. Um, looks a bit lighter than the chocolate to me. So nice to have a different brown in this. This is Jonkiel. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, I think, but I'm not English. <laughs> I'm allowed. Um, this is, no, this is Jonkiel. And this then would be Cloudberry. So sorry about that. That's the difference. And this is owl down. Okay, I guess they mean in the in the little soft fluffy feathers. That's down, right? <laughs> At least it is in German. <laughs> and then once again, ecru ecru. So this is absolutely cute. So so cute. <laughs> My nose is itching bad today. I think I have cat hair in my face and I can't remove it. Or I'm just neurotic. That's also very, very possible. Probably more likely than me having cat hair on my face. Let's be honest. So let's put the thread back in the bag. So there's that. So these are all the kits from the series. If you're interested in the other three, there are unboxings for them up on my channel. Just check the Stitchy unboxing um, playlist and you shall find them there. Oh, this is even not cut open. Would you look at that? So this is... Um, the Whale, Monster Wonder Whale is the name. This is a companion piece to Bayoon Cat, which, like I said, was my first kit I did. I think that the first kit they came out with was either the Whale or the Dragon. Um, the Dragon will be ordered soonish. Um, I want to, to put all three of these pieces together whenever I am done with them and have them actually framed. Uh, framing is my biggest nemesis with cross-stitching. I always want to do it, I never do it. Because I'm good at that. So, stay open box, be a good box. We have our threads, we have our needle minder, which is this, this little, eh. This little dragon boat. It's so cute. <laughs> we have our threads and we have our fabric. This is also a Zweigart fabric, but this is not quite as plain. This has a bit of modeling, as you can probably see. I do not know if these are specially made for our forest or if Zweigart sells them. I have not found this particular color here in Germany, and I would suspect I should be able to because Zweigart is a German um 
manufacturer. They are actually uh, in one town over in the town next door, basically. <laughs> um, I always wanted to visit their their factory store, but um, stupid beer virus won't let me. Um, but I've never seen it. I know they do variegated stuff like this because I've bought it. Like Vintage Country Mocha is one of them. And there is uh, a lot of other vintage called fabrics like Vintage Beige, Vintage Grey. They are these, these modeled fabrics. But I've never seen um, a, a yellowish fabric like this before I got my Owl Forest kits. So no idea there. So this is one of the bigger ones, like I said. And you can see that the pattern pack is already much much bigger than it was on the um, on the other pattern they are stuck together like this and this is the cut apart version does it have the color legend on here because that's all I need no it doesn't I mean I'm pretty sure these are the colors we already know no secrets about that. Um, yeah. How do we do that? <laughs> um, I'm not going to show these to you because it shows a whole strip of the pattern, but I'm going to read them. These are all, except for one, colors we've already seen. Or two, maybe. Two. So... Come on. This is once again foxtail. This is again cloudberry. Don't know why suddenly the colors are so warm. This is once again the unpronounceable one, Junkil, Junkil, no idea, thing, that is beige yellow. Um, this is Pear, just a tiny little bit of light green and this golden color. This is Olive again. I would not call this an olive green. <laughs> this is way too pretty for olive green. Then we have once again uh, Thunder Sky, the bluish gray, which looks very blue right now. It is gray. It has a hint of blue, but it is primarily gray, at least to my eyes. It might be one of those colors that everyone sees differently. And this is Salt and Pepper, which is a Dark, 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 gray going into black, but not a true black. So these are the g colors for the whale. I think they are pretty much the same colors um, as Bio and Cat had. So they are going to keep the color palettes pretty consistent, um, which makes sense because these patterns obviously belong together. <clears throat> Bayon Cat also had the same fabric and I think that the dragon also has this um, light, light, light yellow beige fabric. So all coordinating to go together and I love that. I plan to get the same frame just in different colors um, because they, um, I think they would go well together. And I think Owl Forest actually does the same. I think they use this frame for all three and just use it in different colors. So I thought this was a good idea. Uh, let's move over to the latest kit I received, which is this one here. It is called Hyperborea. And this is actually available as this kit I have here. And then split into three kits. And they are all then square. You know, the separation is here. And then again, I believe somewhere here. 
Um, they are melt together a little bit here, as you can see, they are not exactly straight lines you could cut through, but um, this one kit was a more appealing to me and it's also a bargain if you get it like this. The only downsides, uh, most of our flowers kits come with linen and my personal downside for this one is that this comes with uh, Murano, which is an even weave and not a linen, or I should say Zweigart linen usually also is an even weave. Um, even weave actually only means that um, the threads are woven in a way that 10 stitches from left to right is the same size, like 10 stitches up and down. There are linens which are woven not quite as even and then you have the um, the effect that something that is actually square appears rectangle rectangular after you've stitched it. So these linens usually are called something like uh, 5460 or something like that. So you know in one direction it is a 54 count and in the other direction it's a 60 count and then it's not an even weave. But um, a linen like this Belfast linen is an even weave just as the Morano is. The difference is that this is 100% linen and it has these little um, imperfections in the threads. Let's see if we can compare the two. Ah, come on. Don't get stuck on my shirt. You see these little imperfections here? You have these thicker threads and sometimes you have thinner threads. I think this here is also a good example of that. And then you have what we colloquially call even weave, um, which is the Lugana um, line. One is called Murano, that is the 32 count, and the other one is the Brittany, that's the 28 count, and I don't know what the higher counts might be called. Um, these are actually a mix of, as you can see, cotton and viscose. And I'm not a fan because the weave is extremely tight and it gives me it gives me bad goosebumps if I have to pull the thread through this this weave, so I'm I'm not a fan. The difference, and that's why this is colloquially called even weave, is that you do not have. I think you can see that you do not have any of these uneven, imperfect threads. So you do not have the the thicker and the thinner. It's all the same. Which at first made the fabric appealing to me. I thought I would really like this, but no, nope, I just I can't with the tight weave. I think this is this shows it pretty well. What the difference is, I prefer to stitch on linen three thousand times over this. So that's the only downside to this kit. I will not be able to use this fabric. Um, I would never finish this project if I did. So I'm not going to do that, but I'm, I'm, I have, to, I think about 20 different blue pieces of linen in my stash. I will be able to find something I can use with this kit. Also, since this is kind of a um, Nordic inspired kit and I'm thinking um, Aurora Borealis. I am thinking that something that has a bit of sparkle and maybe a few more colors in there than just plain blue might be might be the thing. So since this is made up of um, three patterns, you get all three needle minders that you would get if you purchased them separately. So you have the polar bear, you have the owl, and you have the... Is that, is that a lynx? I'm not entirely sure. The wild cat. These are so cute. Absolutely adore them. There's a poop ton of this extremely light white blue in here. So that's exciting. That's a color I have not had before. And then we have a giant pattern. This, I think, is even bigger than the previous one. I believe. So let's see. Oh, 
not here, then it's on here. Here's also another picture of what it's going to look like once it's done. It is so gorgeous. I need a floss list. Give me. So here's the floss list. And let's see. Oh, we have a few colors I have not seen before, if I'm not mistaken. Which I think is great. So we start off with Crimson Maple. It is this dark wine red. I wonder if I can just, if I turn it off. Yeah, I think that's much better. The light today is atrocious. It is so gray and, and rainy one moment and then again sunny outside it drives me nuts. Then we have two skeins of chocolate. This one looks a bit warmer than this one, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, but it's the same symbol, so it's both chocolate. Then we have, of course, my friend, Jonquil, Jonquil, whatever. <laughs> then we have Three skeins of ice blue. This is extremely light. Um, it's very pretty. It's a hair that's not mine. <laughs> and I hope I did put anyone off. I don't mind so much unless it's in my food. Uh, this is silver. And it sure is silver. This is pretty. Very, very pretty. Gorgeous. Uh, this is blue sky, right? Yeah. Blue sky. This is amazing. This is going to have a wild variegation. It goes from nearly white to this medium blue. Wow. Then we have Dark Cloud, which is this darkish blue. Again, never had this color. All these blues are new to me too, so, so far only two known colors. I think the last one, yep, the last one is a new one too. The last one is fabulous. It's a green teal mix and it's called seaweed <gasps> this is this is absolutely gorgeous i might be wrong and i might have had that in the sea king of but i, I don't remember right now <laughs> but it's a beautiful color i like this very much i just have to find a different piece of fabric but you will you will find out what i chose once i start this kit just have to find out what I'm going to do with the original fabric because it's surely never to to become anything in my household. Because apparently I can't even weave. <laughs> we just hate each other. Which is very odd. With my crafting I'm usually extremely perfectionistic and and I don't want things in my crafting that are not 100% perfect. I call myself a bit of a crafty monk, um, which I'm not in the rest of my life, but um, for whatever reason I was on board with linen once I put the first stitch into a piece of linen. And the last two are a tiny bit different because they have some embroidery stitches as well, which is the reason why I got them and found them so interesting. And they belong together. They are two of a set of four. And they are the four season kits. So this is autumn. Bounteous autumn. 
This is stitched on the 28 count, which I am ecstatic about. You know that 28 and 36 are the two linens I'm most comfortable with. I don't mind the 32 in our forest kits because they are usually not hand dyed and they are still 32 once you get them. So hand dyeing usually shrinks your fabric a little and that's I think my biggest problem with 32 hand dyed. Um, my 28 hand dyed is probably more like 30. So I'm okay with that, but I am not sad to stitch on a piece of 28 count, let me tell you. These are also still not opened, I just noticed, and I've had them for months. <laughs> See, I held them all back to do unboxings, and then I never did those. <laughs> so this, again, comes with the same stuff as everything else, but this is a 209, and by 209, I didn't mention this for the other two. This is the 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 the, the, the whale is a hundred and eighty nine by one hundred eleven, or thirty by seventeen point five centimeter, which is twelve by seven inch. Um, this is fourteen inch, fifteen inch, and a little bit in size, stitched on twenty eight count. So let's have a look. Most of this is cross stitch, but some of it, itchy nose, you are annoying me. Some of it is going to be embroidery stitches. I'm going to put some of the pictures from the Owl Forest um, website up because they show close ups of all the stitching. They have models stitched up for everything they sell. So, um, as a kid at least, I don't know about the rest, but the kits are all stitched up so you can have a look at that. Um, the needle minder for this one is this little squirrel. And my camera does obviously not like squirrels. Don't, ah, uh, no. Don't diss the squirrel. The linen is this, I would say this is raw. The color is called raw linen. Because this really looks like like just straight up linen, nothing done with it, and just woven it into a fabric. Um, we have a ginormous pattern. This is definitely bigger than the other one. But with this, we should also have certain instructions for how to do some of these stitches. Because the center pieces are special stitches and I think there are a few special stitches throughout the piece too but it's mostly the center piece. And the most recent kit they released just before they went on vacation I think it was a cherry blossom garden or something like that that had also had some embroidery stitches um, in there. Well so far I can only see cross stitch on the outside and all the special stitches are on the inside. They don't look super complicated so maybe there are no special instructions on here. If you follow the the pattern you should be able to do this. It does look very doable and it is spread across three pages. So this is a pretty big one. Which is not surprising. But this does not have the floss list. It's a good thing I have a lot of pictures for this one, or you would be bored out of your mind by now. So, is this the cutter? Oh, there is. How many sheets of paper are in here? I found the floss list. Would you look at that? And I think I also found the instructions. I think you can see that shine through. So there are instructions on here. So there are a lot of the same colors. Um, I think I'm not going to take them out of the bag because you can see them pretty well. Um, this is once again Owl Down. This probably is hazelnut because it's the only brown in here. Then we have mellow plum. That should be this one. This is English red. And then we have these three, 
This is honey, this is cloudberry, so that is ginger cat. Oh, uh, we have three greens. The lightest one is young leaves, that should be this one. Then we have oak leaf, that should be the middle shade here. And then we have two big skeins of the forest shadow, which is the green I'm using in the water spirit right now. So a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful greens. And then of course the typical autumn oranges, reds, and um, anything nature has brown in it. So that is very, very beautiful. Let's put this back together and back in the box. And we are finally at the last full kit. This is a much longer video than I thought it would be. Probably should have split this in two after all. And the second one I got was the winter one. This is snowy winter. Again, same size, uh, a few less stitches. The um, autumn one had over 1,000, uh, over 15,000. <laughs> let's, let's read our numbers correctly. Over 15,000 um, to be exact. It had 15,520 stitches. And this one only has 14,014 only, she said. So this is obviously not as dense as the autumn one. Oh, I swear this cat is trying to kill me. Ooh, there's a purple in there. I dig the purple. So same fabric, same color. And we have this little, this little snowman. So cute. Also, the needle minders in the kits never repeat, so. <laughs> but I think you can purchase them all separately. They are also very cheap, so it's not a big investment to, to buy the needle minders. And we have our floss colors. So we have chocolate again, we have English red again, we have the mellow plum, this is Persian lilac, this is chicory, 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 <laughs> blue, <laughs> okay, uh, this is morning frost. Um, it's once again a very light blue, but it's not the same tone of blue like the ice blue in the other kit. Then we have the owl down once again, um, oak leaf and forest shadow. Very gorgeous. And hopefully I remembered to put all the pictures in to show you what the what the detail, especially in the middle, looks like. Because the middle, like I said, is where the special stitching is going to happen. And I think this piece, yeah, this is the piece that has these overlapping crosses and that has uh, French knots and stuff like that. I've, I've so far not done many French knots and I think when I've done them, I've done them incorrectly. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to try and practice them a little bit because they uh, happen on a lot of pieces and most of the time I either replace them by beads or with, with beads or I don't do them at all. And I think I should just learn how to do them properly and then they look good. That's my theory at least. There's more pattern. Why did you think that was all the pattern? So, <laughs> so this is the last kit. Um, that's all I've purchased so far. Of course, I have another one on the road. Um, because we are talking me. <laughs> I haven't purchased a whole lot of cross-stitching stuff, but I have a wish list from Owl Forest and I'm slowly but surely chipping away at it. I'm trying to get at least one, if not two kits each month. 
Um, so this is fully planned in with my crafty finances. Um, it will take me ages to do these, but I have a plan for for next year. And I think that might help. It involves not getting into any stitch alongs. <laughs> and speaking of stitch alongs, that was perfect segue. Our forest embroidery does um, free stitch alongs, mystery stitch along patterns. The first one they did was The Wizard of Oz. Um, last year, I think latish last year, they started the 100 Owls. And on the 26th or 27th, I think it was the 26th, they started Alice in Wonderland. They announced that they would do it um, a week prior and I ordered my floss pack right away, but it took a couple of, of weeks to arrive. So the second drop for the pattern will be day after tomorrow on the 7th, if I remember correctly. So I'm a bit behind, but I received my floss pack yesterday and this is what the colors look like. So I think we have a few that we have already seen, like there's the air crew. This is the salt and pepper. I think we have seen this English red. This is Mr. Jonkel again, if I'm not <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. This should be dark nude, and this might be the same. No, it's a bit darker. This has to be another green. But the one I was most excited to see was this one here. It's this this mix of gray and and pink. It's very fantastic. And I like this blue as well. It's so pretty. So the first pattern they, they released, I'm going to put a picture up here. That's the center of it. The rose, um, rose bow thing. <laughs> so I'm going to, once I'm finished with the dark queen for this month, I'm going to start on this and trying to catch up so I can keep up with the stitch along. They are going to drop a part of this every two weeks and I think it runs until the end of the year. I am completely prepared once again. But if you're interested in that, you can get the pattern for free. You don't have to purchase their floss pack. Um, this is stitched on Vintage Country Mocha, so you can get this fabric super easily. It's pretty much available everywhere. It's once again Swigard. And um, they recommend 32 count. It's a pretty big thing. Um, is it on here how big that is? No, I don't think so. It's a pretty big piece. Um, I know that they recommended a 52 by 52 centimeter piece of fabric. So that is basically like a 21 inch square, I think, in 32 count. So I have gone ahead and purchased the 32 count. You saw that in my last floss tube. And I'm going to start on this and yeah. It's going to be epic. But there were also five needle minders with this. So let's have a look at them. First up is little Alice going through the tiny door after she ate the little thing and drank the other little thing <laughs> to get to the correct size. Then we have the White roses painted red. We have the drink me bottle. We have the caterpillar. And I don't know if he is always called Absalom or if this is just Disney. But I think he actually is called that. I've read Alice in Wonderland, but it's been so long. It's been like a decade since I read the book. Probably should reread it. And last but not least, um, there's no Alice without a Cheshire cat. So here he is. I couldn't, for the life of me, decide to which way, to decide which needle minder to get. Words, right order, not hard. Um, but like I said, they are pretty inexpensive. Um, I don't know, maybe three euro, four euro, something like that. It is not a lot. I think it's actually more like three. 
So, yeah. Good decision. I like these needle minders. I repurpose them all the time because they are easy, they are quick to grab, and they are pretty strong. All right. I did not think this video would get an hour long. <laughs> I intended to edit and upload this today. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> if you see that on Thursday, I'm sorry. That's because uploading to YouTube right now takes 3 million years and a day. But I'm going to try my best to put all the pictures in and upload this right away. I'm not going to listen back to it. So that sh should save me an hour. Thank you for your patience. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, you asked for it, so <laughs> chances are high. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try and integrate any further kits I receive into Flosstube when I get around to filming Flosstube. I really want to. I miss Flosstube. Flosstube is so much fun. Um, so let's see where we are. We are getting with this. All right, guys. That's it. I don't want to draw it out. This is ginormously long. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. I'm trying to be back tomorrow. We will see how this works out. Um, I should be back because it's going to be the second wrap up because I was an idiot and messed it up for the DP theme of the month for um, April. But let's see. Bye bye.